Hello, so last time I introduced the idea of complexity analysis of algorithms, and today I'm going to be using a worksheet to go over that in more detail and try to get a, a better understanding of what's happening. Um, so from last time, there are some very fundamental ideas that I have up on, on top here. Um, the first was a notion of a step, and a step is any unit of work within our code that has bounded execution time. And, um, and that's somewhat of a vague um, uh, definition, right? I mean, a step is maybe one line of code. Uh, it, it might be a couple lines of code together. Um, sometimes uh, a single line of code might not really count as a single step. Um, and so what really matters, right, is that it's bounded execution time. And I can kind of define steps however I want when I'm looking at a piece of code, um, as long as I respect that. Um, so what does this mean to have bounded execution time? Um, well, look what I'm not saying. I'm not saying constant execution time. It's totally possible that a step is sometimes fast and sometimes slow. Um, what, what does bounded mean? Bounded means there's kind of some sort of worst case and, um, and it'll never be worse than that worst case, even if the input size keeps growing, okay? So if, as I get bigger and bigger inputs, it, it might be possible that a particular step executes more times, but executing at any one of those times won't get slower and slower as the inputs um, get larger and larger. So if I look at a piece of code and I break it up into steps, then what that does is that it gives me a function, right? The, the number of steps that uh, execute when I run my code are going to depend on my input size. And, um, and so that's the other thing we want to measure here is, well, what is the input size? Uh, maybe it's the size of some list I'm analyzing or the number of lines in a file um, or the size of a number that I'm trying to check whether it's prime or not. It could be different things in different cases. And I'll, and I'll kind of think for my particular code, um, what feature of the input and its size uh, will affect how many steps I do. But absolutely some sort of function exists that relates the input size to, um, uh, to the number of steps. And so what we're really curious about is the shape of that function. Is it straight? Is it curved? Uh, curved up? Is it curved down? And so we have to have this whole theory with order of growth that will let us define um, what the shape of the curve is. And this whole theory of order of growth or the big O notation, you might remember last time we talked about big O, is that we don't want to really get kind of bogged down in the details of how we ended up counting steps, right? Maybe you um, kind of broke up a piece of code into twice as many steps as I did, both while following the legal definition of it. And so what we don't want to do is, is kind of get different orders of growth just because we counted it that way. So we aren't going to really care about the shape of those curves being multiplied by some constant factor. We just care about the shape without really kind of looking at the scale um, of, of the y-axis. And so that led us to this definition of, of big O. Um, we have our, our function, right, that takes the number of um, steps as a function of, of input size. And if we can say that that curve is underneath g of n, then we can say that f of n belongs to the set of order g of n. And also the algorithm that underlies f of n is order g of n. And I'm allowed to do two things. I'm allowed to multiply g n by any constant factor. And I'm allowed to say that we only look at large n values. So I can set some sort of threshold. I can say we're only looking at n values greater than 1,000. OK, so that was kind of a bit of a review. Um, I want to show what it looks like to kind of show that one curve uh, fits beneath another. And so that's what I have a bunch of examples of here. And really we're trying to, um, you know, we're doing a little bit of math, but we're really trying to get the intuition more so than being um, super rigorous. Okay, so I have some sort of algorithm. And if my input size is n when I'm running it, I have to do this many steps. And I've plotted that here um, as this red line over on the, or I'm sorry, as this black line right here, the solid black line. and so when I'm talking about what class that line is and the, the kind of related algorithm, um, I may be looking at what lines are an upper bound on that line. Okay, so the very first thing we want to show 
right? So this for this first one here uh, on the left, uh, we want to show that f of n is in order n cubed, n to the third. And so what is a good lower bound on n? And what should c be? Um, I guess I've already picked for us c, c is one. Generally, when you're trying to make such a claim that a uh, function is in a class like this, um, you can choose that. But I've already chosen that, so now all we have to do is choose the lower bound. So looking over here on the right-hand side, right over here, I've drawn all of these different different lines. And I can see there's this line here, n squared times 1. 1 is our c. And so, so really what I'm kind of interested in is this line here. I'm going to highlight over it. And the area over which it's bigger than f of n. Remember, f of n is a solid black line. And, and so I can see there's a crossover point here. And I can see basically after about 3.5, uh, this is an upper bound. And it's trying to keep being an upper bound, even though I'm not really being mathematically rigorous right now. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, well, n is greater than. And I have different options. I mean, I can try to read exactly what this is on the x-axis. Um, but there's no real um, kind of bonus points for being strict. So I'm just going to say if it's greater than 4, right? Anywhere bigger than 4, uh, the n cubed line is above the f of n line. And, and I could have said something else too, right? I mean, instead of 4, I could have just as easily said you know, 10. It doesn't matter, right? There's no um, bonuses for kind of being... Um, stingy. And the same thing here for, for the C, right? I mean, I could have, if I wanted to, I could have had that be two um, or whatever, right? We want to show that eventually as we keep going to the right and we have some multiplier on that upper bound that our line is stuck beneath it. So I'm just trying to kind of clean that back up a little bit. Great, just like that. And, um, and so that's good. Okay, so for this next one, let, let me kind of erase a little bit over here on the right. Um, for this next one, we want to show something a little bit trickier. We want to show that f of n is inside of order n squared. And um, in general, remember, right, you could pick c as anything you want. And you can also pick n is greater than anything you want when you're trying to show that this other line is an upper bound. Um, now, to do this visually, I've chosen a few c's. 1, 2, and 4. I could have had 3 or 5 or, or any number in there. I'm just trying to keep the picture not too cluttered. And so I want you to choose one of those three. And you can see them on the right-hand side, for example. Um, here is c equals 1 times n squared. Here is c equals 2 times n squared. And here is c equals 4 times n squared. All right. so what I want you to do is I want you to choose one of those that's trying to um, help us make our argument that f of n is in n squared. And I also want you to choose um, a lower bound for n. And so pause me, take a moment until you actually write down um, specific numbers here and, uh, and then play me again and we'll talk through it. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is that two of these are just no goes, right? This one's no good and this one's no good because they're completely beneath this line everywhere, right? And, and so those are not gonna really help me make my argument. This other one, four times n squared, what about that one? That one looks more promising. I can see that that is above my f of n line and kind of keeps growing uh, larger, right? And I'm not proving that they never cross over in the future, um, but you can probably convince yourself of that and kind of see by the shape of the way things are growing that that's true. Okay, so so that means, again, I have some sort of uh, crossover point here, right? And so this is kind of the point I'm interested in. I could try to figure out what exactly that is. Well, actually, before I even do that, let, let me kind of write down my answer, right? So I saw that 4 is trying to work for me. And if I'd given all you other options, I mean, you could say 5 or 10 or a million, right? There's no bonus points for kind of getting as close as possible. And then the end value, right? And so I could say 3 or... I guess I'll just draw with three. Um, I mean, I could have said four or five or whatever, right? So I've shown now that, I've shown two of things. I've shown that f of n is in the set of order n squared, and I've shown that f of n is in the set of order 
um, did I say order and squared or cubed? So it's in the set of order and cubed and the set of order and squared. And the reason it's in both of them is that you should imagine some sort of picture like this. I have um, here, I have the set of order and cubed. And then within that, there's a subset, which is order, order and squared. And then within there, right, I have another subset, which is going to be order in, right? And so I have all these subsets. It's like almost like a Venn diagram. And, um, and when I have an algorithm, let me switch colors here. When I have an algorithm or a function, right, that's some sort of point in here, right? This point is f of n, f of n, which is counting my steps for my algorithm. <coughs> And, and f of n was what? That was equal to 2 n squared plus n plus 12, right? Just from the definition up here. Okay, and so if I'm inside of this circle here, of course I'm inside of any, any bigger circles, right? So both of these things are totally true. Now I might ask you, just straight off, I might say, what is the complexity of f of n? And so both of those answers are correct. Which of those is more informative? well, the smaller circle, right? If I tell you you're inside of the smaller circle, then obviously you're also inside of the, the larger circle, right? So this is a better answer. Well, their answer is true, but it doesn't tell me as much. If I just say that I'm in outer circle, I mean, maybe I'm here, maybe I'm here, I don't know, right? So this will be the better answer. And if I have a quiz or a test or anything like that, then this is the answer I would expect if I just said, um, you know, what is the complexity of f of n? Um, you would lose points if you gave this, even though it's technically true. I'm expecting the most informative answer. Okay, so we've shown two things that are true. And what this last one is, question, is uh, trying to question is, is our algorithm f of n, or the function that's telling our steps, is that an order n, right? So am I over here on this right? Am I inside of that little circle? And they made the claim that, well, we have c equals 30, and n greater than zero. And, and so kind of what are they doing? They're, I guess they're saying, well, this is zero here. So greater than zero is the kind of at this point. And, and, and so I'm looking at this line here and I'm comparing that to this other line down here, right? And at least for, right, I'm comparing that to that other line, at least for the, <coughs> what I've plotted, it looks like it's underneath, uh, but this is not actually, True, and maybe you can get ahead of that. You can say that this one keeps curving up sharper and sharper. And so you probably have some idea that it's going to go something like that. And, um, and so what I need to do if I want to disprove this or kind of counter their argument is I should suggest a specific n value um, that kind of shows their claim uh, to be false. And, and so, well, what can I do? I, 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 want, I want this. I want to have, um, I want to have two n squared plus n plus 12. I want to show that at some point that is bigger, it crosses over, uh, it, it crosses over what? It crosses over 30 times n, right? So my order n got me this part here. And then, right, so that's kind of where that's coming from. And my c equals 30 is what got this here. Right, so can I show this is true for some n? And, uh, and I think I can. I guess what I'll say is, um, when I'm trying to achieve this, I'll just say, you know, let n equal 30, right? Because when I do that, well, what happens with this, right? I mean, I'm gonna get 900 on this side, and then on the other side, I guess, well, I get 30 squared, which is 900, 1800, 1800, and then 30 plus 12 is 42. So 1842 is greater than, than 900, right? So, so whoever was making this claim by choosing n equals 30 and n is greater than zero, guess what? It's not good enough because I chose an n value that was larger than n, larger than zero. And, and I show that when I crunch the numbers, well, guess what? Eventually this line does indeed pass, pass the other line.